host of that show that podcast called sports plus life people if you are a first time listener i definitely would encourage you to hit the subscribe button and go ahead and follow your boy one time show your boy some love any comments you got or concerns anything you want to debate about whether you want to give props or throw salt don't hesitate to leave a comment right underneath that good old youtube screen but anyway today It is Thursday, December 13th. I think it's the 13th. Sometimes I'll be getting my days mixed up. December 13th, 2018. And I just want to tell everybody one thing. I like chicken. I like chicken. And chicken likes me. I just have me a bum-ass plate of Popeye's chicken. And I mean... You know what? The itis has not kicked in because I've just been too amped about doing this. I've been too I've been too hyped about doing this today. You know, because you know when it's Thursday, it's podcast day. So that's what that means to me. We got some things to talk about. We got some things to talk about. Um, it's gonna get real when it comes to life. Okay, it's going to get really, really, really real. But in the meantime, let's get started on them sports. Let's get started. Let's get to it. All right. Now, let's see. What do we have up here first? All right. I'm just going to do a little quick recap on the uh, Monday night football game between the uh, Seattle Seahawks and the Minnesota Vikings. A big game that had huge playoff implications. And um, coming into the game, Seattle was number five, the first wild card spot. And Minnesota has been slipping. They've been floundering. They've been fading. They came in at the uh, sixth spot, at the number six spot. Well, it was pretty much a defensive-laden football game. And um, the Seattle Seahawks prevailed 21 to 7. And um, like I said, it was a it was a defensive laden game. But point I'm trying to make is, is that with this is Seattle is red hot. You know, nobody's talking about them. And I guarantee you, nobody wants to play them. But the way things are looking right now. The way things are looking right now, one, the Seahawks looks like they they look like they're going to get in that uh, fifth seed, that first wild card spot, because they have the 49ers this week, and um, we'll get into the 49ers beating my Denver Broncos. How the hell? Didn't surprise me, but how the hell do we let that happen? But anyway, they play the 49ers. They will handle their business against the 49ers. See, the 49ers are Cardinals, one of the two. Um, well, the team, they will handle their business. Um, so with that being said, the, um, the Seahawks are going to get that, that first wild card spot and the way it's looking right now with the results from Le week, Le week, they look like they will be matching up against the Dallas Cowboys. In Dallas, ain't this a bitch? <laughs> yes. And um, if you guys remember, Dallas and Seattle met earlier this season. I want to say it was week two. And um, a lot of turnovers, defensive laden games. Now, now, mind you, these are two totally, totally, totally different football teams now. But um, Seattle leads the league in rushing. They lead the league in rushing. Uh, They're running back by committee. They have a three-headed monster, plus they have that elusive quarterback that is Russell Wilson. And um, and their defense, man, their defense, you know, I, it's, I'm not going to sit here and say this is the Legion of Boom, but, you know, it's the Legion of we still here, motherfuckers. It's that, it's that Legion. You know, they, they still, 
They still put a hat on you. They ain't playing no games. Now, as far as stats goes from this previous Monday night game, okay, Russell Wilson, 72 yards. Dude, you know, I mean, hey, a win's a win. I mean, you just look at it like that. Because Russell Wilson is a damn good quarterback. He's a champion. He's a leader. I mean, 72 yards and one interception, I mean, that's not what we write. That's not what we looking for. But, you know, they ran the ball effectively. You know, Chris Carson had 90 yards. Russell Wilson had 61 yards himself. Rashad Penny, eight carries, 44 yards. Uh, Mike Davis, three carries, 22 yards. So they were, and, and the, the, the key stat about that is, None of their running backs average any less than four yards a carry. So when they tote the rock, they get the job done. They've been getting the job done. Now, on to the other side of this equation, the Minnesota Vikings. WTF. You know, I've underlined the Vikings all season long because of that big-ass contract that they gave Kirk Cousins. Guaranteed $84 million, million guaranteed. Whole contract guaranteed. I ain't never seen that before. I don't think anybody's ever seen that before. Yo, Kirk Cousins has been, for as mediocre a quarterback as he is, and that's what he is. He might put up good stats, but fact of the matter is Kirk Cousins is an 8-8, eight 9-7 and, eight, nine and seven quarterback. That's what he is. On a good year, he'll get you 10 wins. You know, I mean, but he's a mediocre quarterback. He's a middle of the pack. I'll throw for a lot of I'll throw for a lot of yards, but I'll get you eight wins, maybe nine, maybe seven. Sounds a lot like Tony Romo to me. Um, but to but but he's been brilliant. His last two years with the Redskins were under two franchise tags, where he made a boatload of money. He made a boat. He made what his last two years combined. He made over forty million dollars with the Redskins. Now he has an eighty-four million dollar fully guaranteed contract for three. What is it? Three years for three years. Three years. So when his three years, if with this contract is up for five years, Kirk Cousins will have made over a hundred and twenty million dollars, and he ain't even that good. He hasn't even won a playoff game. Uh, He's only been to the playoffs once. I mean, his agent is a damn good agent. He's a genius. He's a genius. Because when he signed that contract, it was made to, you know, it was pretty much being made to, you're saying that he's better than Case Keenum, who had a magic carpet ride last year. What happened to that, Case Keenum? You suck. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. The Case Keenum I know showed up on Sunday. Anyway, back to Kirk Cousins. Fucker. So they were saying that Kirk Cousins was better than Case Keenum. And statistically wise, I mean, sure, they're right. But last year, Case Keenum did take them to a um, a 13-3 and record. He did win them a playoff game. You know, he did get them to the NFC Championship game. He did that. Miracle or no miracle, they won. And Kirk Cousins, what was Kirk Cousins? Seven and nine last year with the Redskins? Six and ten, something. Something along that line. I mean, Kirk Cousins is what he is. He was a 10-win quarterback in 2015 and got the Redskins to the playoffs, which they were one and done. After that, he's been average. Sure, he throws for a lot of yards, but he's been average. Minnesota, you wasted your money. You wasted your money. And then on top of that, your defense is conveniently going to be is, – is going to not be as dominant as it was last year. Same personnel. Only thing is Terrence Newman went from a DB to a, to, a, to a DB player to a coach. You know, you still have Xavier Rhodes. You still have Kendricks. You know, you still have, you still have uh, 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 Harrison Smith. You still got your boys. You still got, your, you still got Trey Waynes. You still got that, that uh, fearsome defensive line. What's going on? But here's the crazy part of it. This is the crazy part. This is the part that is, is just so ridiculously – unreal minnesota is six six and one currently in the last wild card spot 
And the thing is, they could still get in because the teams around them, the teams around the teams around that uh, record, are completely collapsing. <laughs> They are collapsing before your very eyes, man. This is this is crazy. I mean, the Carolina Panthers lost to the Cleveland Browns. That is their fifth loss in a row. The Carolina Panthers were 6 and 2 at the halfway point of the season. They have lost 5 straight. They are out of the playoff mix right now. But I mean, you just don't know about what's going to happen with these games because these teams at the bottom of the NFC are too inconsistent. Remember what I said about how uh, the Redskins are pretty much tanking? And actually, I, I, I have to say this. Um, for one, the Redskins got their asses kicked by the Giants. Uh, they were down 40 to nothing at one point. Mark Sanchez got taken out for Josh Johnson. Now, I know the Giants defense had it in the bag and they weren't playing as hard, but Josh... Johnson actually looked pretty good for his first time being in an NFL game, throwing a pass in seven years. Didn't look bad. But um, what I was saying was how um, how bad, how bad the NFC, how bad we thought about the NFC East of saying, okay, only one team is going to come out of there. I mean, that could very, look, that could very well be untrue. That's why it blows my mind with what the Redskins are doing because they lost. They got stomped. But they're 6-7. and seven. They're still in it. They're only a half game out. The Carolina Panthers, as sorry as they have been, they're 6-7. and seven. They're still in it. The Philadelphia Eagles, now that might be a different story because while they were, first of all, they were hosed. The Eagles got screwed. Fuck the Dallas Cowboys. I said it. The Eagles got screwed over from the very first kickoff in the game. Then a bogus BS uh, offensive pass interference late in the game. Just give it to Dallas. Give it to them. But you know what? This is great because the more Cowboy fans walk with their chest out, the more the crash and burn moment is coming. And I can't wait. Y'all are going to be like, phew. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be music to my fucking ears when y'all crash and burn. Anyway, the Eagles may have lost Carson Wentz for the season. Uh, he has a messed up uh, vertebrae. And um, they might have to turn to Nick, Nick Foles, and they have to play this Sunday night against the Rams. That's not looking too good. The Green Bay Packers, who I said are done, they're still in it. They're a game and a half out. I mean, this is crazy. The Tampa Bay Bucks are still in it, mathematically. The New York, let me tell you, let me paint this picture for you guys. And if and, and I sw on everything that I love, if this happens, I am going to laugh my ass off. If this happens. And it would come something, and, and 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 I'm be realistic about it. I really don't think this is going to happen. But if the New York Giants win their last two games, let's see who do they have. They have the Tennessee Titans. Let's see, because the giant the Giants have all of a sudden gotten hot. They've won five of their last six games. Um, and they're at five and eight. Generally speaking, five and eight, ah, you're done. But if the New York Giants win their last two games, which is a definite maybe, they play at home to the Tennessee Titans, not easy. Then they have to go to Indianapolis, definitely not easy. But if they win those two games and the Dallas Cowboys lose their next two games, <laughs> which is against the, they're at Indianapolis, not easy. They're at home against Tampa next Sunday. They should win that game. But should they not, then the last game of the regular season at Giants Stadium could be for the NFC East title. I will say that again. If the Giants win their, la their next two and the Cowboys lose their next two, the NFC East could come down to a winner-take-all between the Cowboys, against the Giants, 
who the Giants were at one point in time, one and seven. Wouldn't that be a storyline? Anyway, now that's probably tapping on fool's goal, but anyway, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. And um, so, but that's how crowded and cluttered everything is in the uh, NFC. Now, the AFC, please tell me, please tell hey, this is what I have to say about Bill Belichick and the Patriots right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to add this. <laughs> Yo, that play was so dope. That was so dope that my, what Miami did. As a Bronco fan, I said this last week, as a Bronco fan, I should have rooted for the Patriots. Because the Dolphins are right in that wild card race that my Denver Broncos, despite their unexcusable loss to the San Francisco 49ers, are still, they are still actually in the mix of the wild card. But like I said, if the Patriots lost, my feelings won't going to be hurt. When I saw that play, I laughed my ass off. Yes, I did. So the Dolphins, it's, it's, it's. The AFC is still a big clusterfuck as well. The AFC is still very crowded and congested. You got the Dolphins who are 7-6. and six. You got the Ravens who lost a heartbreaker to Kansas City. They are 7-6. and six. You got the uh, uh, Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans who are all 7-6. and six. Well... Hey, you know, it's 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 December in the NFL. There are a lot of things that need to be sorted out. One thing that will be sorted out will be tonight's game. It is essentially for the AFC West and potential number one seed in the in the uh, AFC. The 11 and two Kansas City Chiefs host the 10 and three Los Angeles Chargers. And I am going to watch every minute of this football game because this game is big. Prime time, big game, huge game. Um, but things are just unraveling. Things are starting where you think you, you start to see, get your separation of teams who are strong. Instead, these teams are starting to unravel. It's amazing. The Pittsburgh Steelers lost to the Oakland Raiders. You suck. Now, I'm going to get into the Pittsburgh Steelers in a minute, but you lost to the Oakland Raiders. You suck. Man. You know, they've lost three straight. They're seven, five, and one, clinging. You know, thanking Patrick Mahomes on the low low for beating the Ravens to keep them in first place. Hey man, it's not and Pittsburgh's schedule is brutal. Brutal. They have the Patriots this week. They have the Saints next week. Woo. Woo. Me oh mao, mao me. So that is word in football right now. Of course, I will go into, I will dive into the games. Uh, I will dive into the games that are coming up. I mean, I just, I did as quick, I did a pretty much quick recap for the last week. I did a quick recap uh, for last week's, the important games. I mean, the Dolphins with their miracle play. Pittsburgh loses to Oakland. How the hell does that happen? Denver blows it at uh, San Francisco. Philly gets hosed in Dallas. No, one thing I didn't talk about, the Chicago Bears. Yo, yo, yo. This is why you don't want the Chicago Bears to ever have home field advantage during the playoffs. Nobody wants to go to brick-ass Soldier Field in January where it is 10 degrees and they have a defense that will smack the living hell out of you. Jared Goff looked petrified. Not even just because of the Bears' defense. He looked petrified because of the weather. It's a California kid. Man, he wasn't ready to play. He wasn't ready for that. He wasn't ready for that cold. He wasn't ready for that defense. I'm going to tell y'all something, man. As much offensive explosions as we've seen in the NFL this year, defense is carrying the ball against some of the – I mean, it's, they're carrying the ball against uh, uh, these teams. Look at the uh, Cowboys versus the Saints. Look at the Bears versus the Rams. Look for three and a half quarters at Baltimore and Kansas City. If you have a hard-hitting defense, these offenses 
you know, the game has gotten so soft that when you smack them, they really they, they don't honestly know how to react now. I mean, you just got to hope that the officials won't throw a penalty flag on you. Honestly, you just really have to hope that they'll let you play physical and actually let you play. What is it called? Um, football. Yeah, they let you they actually let you play football. So um, that covers the weekly games. That covers the weekly games for right now. Um, now, I just mentioned something about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, excuse me because I'm a little porched. I just mentioned about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, somebody in the newspaper wrote an article saying that Mike Tomlin should be fired. Are you kidding me? What type of an idiot would actually think that Mike Tomlin, of all coaches, should be fired? You know... Stuff like that makes me mad. Now, should you lose to the Raiders? No. But the sun shines on the dog's ass once every once every now and again. Everybody gets lucky. But Mike Tomlin has been a model of consistency since he got the head coaching job back in 2007. Mike Tomlin is the third third longest tenured coach in the game behind Bill Belichick and Marvin Lewis. And there's Mike Tomlin. And Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season. He's been to multiple AFC championship games. He's been to two Super Bowls. He's won a Super Bowl championship. That was 10 years ago. Granted, okay, fine. But of recent history... They were 13-3 and three last year. The year before that, they were in the AFC Championship game. The year before that, they made the playoffs. So this notion that Mike Tomlin should be fired, yo, I'm going to keep it that this clear to the person who thinks that Mike, and I'm not even a Steelers fan, to the person that thinks that Mike Tomlin, of all coaches, should be fired, let me be blunt, fuck you. You have lost your damn mind. Mike Tomlin is one of the most intense, motivational, just leader of men coaches in the NFL. They weren't even expected to be, to really be what, to really even be, to win the division. No Le'Veon Bell. Now Connor's hurt. He should tighten up that defense a little bit, but the Steelers, by and large, have been in it and will continue to be in it. They have to take care of business. Yes, they do. But one thing about the Pittsburgh Steelers that I give them credit like I will give no other organization in the NFL credit for is they are consistent and they believe in stability. This is an organization that has had three head coaches in the last 50 years. Chuck Noll, Bill Cowher, Mike Tomlin. 50 years, six Super Bowl championships. Model of consistency. And the fact of the matter is, if this were Bill Cowher, would you be calling for Bill Cowher to get fired? Bill Cowher had a couple of losing seasons while he was in Pittsburgh. Bill Cowher's a great coach. Mike Tomlin's a better coach. It's that simple. It's really that simple. And I know there are a lot of people out there who are loyal to Bill Cowher. Mike Tomlin's a better coach. I don't care what you say. There's no way you can slice it any different. Mike Tom, look at the numbers. Mike Tomlin's a better head coach than Bill Cowher. I believe before everything is said and done, Mike Tomlin will win another Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And um, I just wanted to address that because saying Mike Tomlin should be fired is like, is like, that's just like saying two plus two is 22. It's just wrong. It doesn't make sense. No, Jason Garrett should be fired, okay? Jason Garrett should be fired, not Mike Tomlin. 
okay, Marvin Lewis. And I was never an advocate of Marvin Lewis getting fired, but I think after this season with the collapse that the Bengals have had, of course injuries played, uh, uh, played a part, but I think now it's time for Marvin Lewis to go. Okay. Ron Rivera should be on the hot seat. You know, honestly, we want to get, you know, you want to make shit clear. The coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers should be fired. You know, he should be fired. Jay Gruden should be fired. Okay. You've been the Redskins coach for a little while now. What the hell have you done? What have you done? One playoff appearance. And you've had the job since 2014. You sabotaged Robert Griffin for Kirk Cousins, and you've been in the playoffs once. No, he should be fired, not Mike Tomlin. All right, so let's get that out the way. Do I think John Harbaugh? No. Do I think Sean Payton? Not now because he's gotten it together the last couple of years. But Mike Tomlin? Nah, man. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Mm -mm. So now that I've gotten that off my chest, because like I said, I'm not a Steelers fan, but I hate hearing bullshit. Now that I've got that off my chest, there are rumors in the in there are rumors in the NBA that next season Kevin Durant and Kawhi Leonard could be heading to Hollywood, 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 but not wearing the uniforms that you're thinking. That instead of the purple and gold, they could be donning the red and white of the LA Clippers. Man, let me tell you. Let me tell you, if Kevin Durant and Kawhi Leonard team up for the Clippers, ooh, you talking about battle Los Angeles for real. Because I think that's a good look. Because if you look at the Clippers now, they're 17 and 10 with real with just a bunch of supplemental role players. Doc Rivers is maybe doing his best coaching job. There's no superstar on his team. He has a good six-man, an elite defensive player in Avery Bradley, and a bunch of role players. And they're just, they're playing, they're playing hard. They're getting the job done. But if you throw a Kawhi Leonard, they position themselves financially where they can attract two max free agents in this upcoming offseason. Boy, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people don't realize the brains behind the Clippers trust is a person who started three dynasties, three dynasties, Jerry West. Jerry West started the Showtime Lakers dynasty with Magic, Kareem, and Worthy. He started the Shaq and Kobe dynasty. And he, he architected the dynasty that is right now of the Golden State Warriors. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Jerry West, if anybody can pull it off, it's Jerry West. So, Magic Johnson, you have got work to do. I don't think I, – I didn't never think Kevin Durant – I never thought that Kevin Durant was coming to the Lakers anyway. And now he's – I mean, people are trying to now, like, start some shit between Kevin Durant and LeBron because KD recently came out and said the greatest players that he's ever seen of his era was Jordan, Kobe, and uh, – uh, Kyrie Irving and he didn't say anything about LeBron man look I wouldn't say anything about LeBron either because you have these people like Max Kellerman and Nick Wright who come on sports talk shows and I love them I'm fans of theirs but who sit there and make it seem like LeBron is the is the the greatest basketball player to ever to ever drink water and breathe air and that he's so far head and shoulders above the rest of everybody else and no he's not no he ain't no, he's not. You put Kevin Durant on any team, any team, and they're an instant title contender, okay? To me, i am be honest with you, Kevin Durant is better than LeBron James at this point in time. He's better than him. He scores better. The only thing LeBron James does better than him is pass. That's it. That's it. At this point in time, the only thing that LeBron James does better than Kevin Durant is pass because he doesn't score better. 
He's definitely not clutch. He doesn't play defense better. He doesn't rebound better. That's all LeBron has on KD. You put Kevin Durant on the Washington Wizards. They're an instant championship team. They're an instant championship contender. You put Kevin Durant on the Miami Heat, instant title contender. You put Kevin Durant now by himself on the Clippers, instant title contender. You bring Kevin Durant back to Oklahoma City, I'd put them as the favorite. We know that's not going to happen. But I would. So this notion that LeBron is so head over heels, better than everybody else, and that there's LeBron and then there's everybody else that's three steps below, man, please, please, how much is he paying you to say that? I'm just to be honest. How much is his squad paying you to say that? Because LeBron's a great, great, great player, arguably the best, and most people, and, and the best in most people's cases. But I don't think he's better than KD right now, man. I don't. I don't. So um, I just wanted to get that out the way, and um. Yeah, I said it was going to be a um, couple of sports topics, but um, we done with sports for right now, folks. So where's that buzzer? I am parched. <clears throat> so now this is the life edition. And um, I'm going on a uh, Facebook Live right now, and um, cause I, I said I would because I've had a lot of uh, conversation, <laughs> so to speak, over the last week about um, relationships. Now it's it's the holiday season, it's the season, and um, but I just hear I you know. One thing I always kind of uh, trip off of and marvel at is, you know, people's different opinions when it comes to relationships. You know, everybody is like, everybody is in uh, like, like, like competition. You know, everybody's in like competition with each other. You know, men don't do this and women don't do that. And men, and, you know, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's funny it's actually funny to hear a, it's funny to actually hear a woman talk about a man in a relationship, especially when a woman is talking about a man as if they shit don't stink. So, and I might touch a few nerves here, but you know what? I don't give a fuck how many nerves that I touch today because what I what I be hearing, I hear that you know, all men are dogs. I actually heard I heard somebody say this. All men are dogs. All men are dogs. Wolf, wolf, wolf. All men are dogs. And, you know, something was said to me that was truly, truly, you know, it, it made me laugh. It made me think. And what I was, uh, what I heard was, okay, if men are dogs, <clears throat> And I want you to listen and listen good. If all men are dogs, then some of the women might not be a good trainer. I'm going to look at it like that. If men are dogs, then, then women, you ain't a good trainer. Or that particular woman must not be a good trainer. Because what do we know about dogs? If you love them right, you feed them, you take good care of them, they're as loyal as loyal can be. So, fine, we be the dog, but who's the trainer? Who's the trainer? Because if a woman, because if a woman is like a cat, there's pussy all over the street. And I'm talking about a pussy cat. So, that is what it is. You know, the problem is, what type of dog are these women out here looking for these women who want to judge us men by saying that we are this, that, and the third? What's going on? How you doing? The best work, buddy. Um, 
So what, what I mean, so what what is going on? Because this notion, I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it's all competition. It's all crazy. You know, you know, everybody, the crazy thing is, is that everybody out here tries to use the other person. Each sex tries to use the other one religiously. It's crazy. It's crazy. So to sit here and say one does this and the other one doesn't, doesn't do that, that's not true. That's not true. Because as much as you may say a man is a dog, hey, man. Women are way more trifling. They just more slick with it when it comes to certain situations. And I'm being real. I'm being so real. Phone ringing reality podcast. You know, so when I hear these conversations about how men are this, that, that, and the third, and look, there are some, and look, bottom line is, there are some, there are some, trifling dumb no good guys out there they are there are some trifling dumb no good guys out there but if i'm sitting here and i'm listening to a woman tell a story about all the drama and all of this and all of that in their life that they going through courtesy of their man and it and it happens with every single relationship that you've been in then it's time for you to take a look in the mirror and see why is it that you keep attracting this type of lifestyle and what do you want to do to change it or do you even want to change it? Because the truth of the matter is a lot of people like that type of lifestyle just because it gives them something to talk about, makes them feel relevant. They love the attention. And some people are just full of shit and all of that stuff don't really be happening to them. They just like the attention. That just is what it is. Look, man, I done been through some shit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking about strictly as far as what I'm hearing with these relationships. It is funny. To, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because it's actually, it's sad. Because, for one, if you're, if you are, um, if you're single, man or woman, man or woman, I'm not discriminating. If you're single, you're a man or a woman, and you're talking with somebody who has multiple kids, whatever, then, you know, who has multiple kids by multiple people, and um, you are upset by the treatment that you're getting, man or woman. Well, you got to do your homework. You know, you got to look at the red flags. <laughs> if you're a man and you're dating a woman that has three or four different kids by three or four different men, don't get me wrong. It's nothing wrong to do that. But if there's some treatment going on that you don't like, do the homework. Do, there, there's a red flag. Same thing with a woman. If you're a woman and you're dating a man who has three or four different kids with three or four different women, you are getting what you pay for and you're feeling mistreatment. So what, I mean, I know that love and fairy dust can blind you, but what is it about you that's so different from baby mama or baby daddy number three? What's the difference? That's really what I, that's what I want to know. What makes you so special? And I'm not saying that you're not special, but what makes you think that you're going to be so special in his or her eyes to make them change their ways? Because it comes a point in time where a person is who they are. And that's not saying that nobody can ever change. But once you get used to doing things a certain way, talking a certain way, acting a certain way, then that's hard for that person to turn the corner. That's hard for that person to turn the corner. And I also was hearing things about how, <laughs> you know, it's one advantage that women got over men. Men will, men will shell out that money if they think they're going to get a return, if you feel what I'm saying. You know, men will shell out that money 
And I've I've come ac- I've come across a, you know a couple of people who say that that's damn near a mandatory. That's damn near a mandatory. You know. Let me tell you something. Um, my goodies are just as valuable as yours. You might not think so, but I believe that. I know that. So um, let's let me let, let me paint a picture. Let me just give you a scenario. Let me give you a scenario. If you are uh, single and you have a friend, and you know, just a friend with benefits, and that's fine. That's cool. We've all had friends with benefits. I mean, we've all had friends with benefits, but if if you have a friend with benefits and you are, you know, you're doing your getting, getting your benefits, do you think that you should help financially? What do you, do you feel, would you think you should feel obligated to help financially with a situation that she may be going through? Because one thing I hate about people is for you to do something for them, I don't care what it is, and for them to throw that back in your face like it's a guilt trip. I don't like that about, I don't like nothing about that about any person. Do you think that there's an obligation? Let me be the first to say it on behalf of myself. Hell no, not if I'm single. Now, if you out there, ladies or or men, if you out there messing with somebody trifling, basically being a side chick, or a side dude, and you asking for money, okay, fine, because that ain't nothing but hush money. <laughs> that ain't nothing but hush money. That ain't nothing but that go on now. That ain't nothing but that go on now check. Hell, a lady came out, a lady came out and told, uh, and found out that uh, Michael Jordan was uh, her, her baby daddy. A lady came out and found out that Michael Jordan was her baby daddy. Ten million dollars later, you ain't heard from her ass no more. <laughs> I'm being real with you. This was a good five. This was a good now about four five years ago. Yeah. Found out that Michael Jordan was her baby daddy. Baby looked just like him. And ten million dollars later, you ain't heard from her ass no more. Now in situations like that, okay, yeah. You got to pay. You pay in the play, player. And not saying that Michael Jordan was married, but there's situations like that where there are people who have been married. They have had a side chick or a side dude, and a baby has gotten involved. And a situation like that, okay, yeah, there is obli- there is financial obligation because you're being trifling, and that's that gone now money. I'm gonna say it again. A couple years ago, lady came out, found out Michael Jordan was her baby daddy. $10 million later, you ain't heard from her ass no more. Or the son. Sign a check. All right, go on about your business. You know? And the thing about it is, is that, you know, we dog each other. And when it comes to, to, to relationships, we dog each other. We really do. You know? And the thing about it is, you may get too messed up thinking about what had happened in a previous relationship that you damaged that for the person who's right for you. And I've been guilty of that. Or you get it together in that relationship and then all of a sudden you've lost your companion because he or she just finally probably just said, fuck it, I don't want to deal with it no more. He don't want me or she don't want me, so fuck it. And then they turn into do, and then they start doing crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? They start doing crazy shit and they start not living right. Now, that's not, no, that, honestly, people say, well, that's their fault for pushing up. No, it's not because we still grown people and you still know right from wrong. I don't want to hear that shit. I'm going to tell you, the one thing that I hate hearing from people who do messed up stuff is for them to say, well, I never meant to hurt you. Yes, you did. Yeah, you did. You did. Because you knew how said person would act once they found out or if, you know, it was told to them or if it was confessed to them. That that insults somebody's intelligence, man. That insults somebody's intelligence. I never meant to hurt you. Bullshit. Yes, you did. Or you wouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? It's really that simple. It's not. I mean, it's it's not it's not 
rocket science, you know? And this is as deep as I've ever gone on this podcast, which is predominantly about sports, about uh, about life, because I got a lot to say about a lot of different subjects. I just try to dumb it down. But I mean, people, I mean, we dog each other, man. We dog each other. But make no mistake about it. You know what I'm saying? If I'm doing me, I'm single. If I'm single and I have a friend with benefits, I don't owe you nothing. And um, I just got a question about the king of R&B. I just heard Jaquise call himself the king of R&B. I mean, I like his music, but the king of R&B where? I mean, to me, the king of R&B is the reigning king of R&B is still, is still R. Kelly. Now, that may be a little uh, nostalgic. I'll still say R. Kelly. I mean, tr- uh, Chris makes his case. Trey makes his case. To me, it's still Kelly because R. Kelly can make a song out of anything. You, I told you last week about the, the video about him going to Ethiopia. Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? I mean, who does that? You know what I mean? Who does that? I mean, Kelly's a genius, man. Kelly's a genius because he can make a song about any and everything. Trey makes his case. Chris makes his case. Usher makes his case. But right now, Kel's, Kel's still got it, man. He still got it. Even the I Admit It song, the whole 20 minutes, Kel still got it. So that's where I wanted to go with life. If I touched a couple of nerves in a good way, great. If I hurt somebody's feelings in a bad way, delete me. <laughs> it's really that, it's that simple. Is really that simple. But speaking of R&B, um, it's Christmas time, and um, I've only sung one Christmas jingle. So what I'm going to do is um, do something that's from my heart right now. You want to know who the king of R&B is, Big A? Me. <laughs> VA R&B anyway. <laughs> so I hope everybody listens, enjoys, and appreciates. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, Our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Here we are as in olden days, happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us. Once more, through the years we all will be together, if the fates allow, hang a shining star upon the highest bough. Through the years we all will be together, if the fates allow. Hang a shining star upon the highest bough. Whoa, and have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Oh. Huh. We're only 
we're 12 days away from Christmas. And um, if you have any issues or whatever, you know, let that shit down. Let that shit go. Embrace the spirit of the holidays. I love everybody, man. I'm going to tell it like it is, but I love everybody. And um, I definitely appreciate everybody. Now, this definitely has been, uh, I want to say this has been an extra special episode of Sports Plus Life. I definitely thank you guys for listening. And um, this your boy. It's your host, Brave Vaughn. Brandon, Brandon, Brayvon Towns. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Holla at your boy. I'll be back soon. Peace.